Welcome to the Chatham Kent Community Athletic Complex for varsity football action on your TV. The Chatham Kent Cougars kicking off to the Waterloo Region Predators. Predators going to scoop it up and good coverage there from the Cougars special teams. Waterloo going to start at about their own 31-yard line. That was a good thing they got him quickly because that kick I don't think went quite as far as they were hoping it would. That was sort of hung up there in the air a little bit. It looked like he just uh, mistimed that or something, but uh, they were able to pick it up quickly, and Cougars, to their credit, able to wrap him up quickly as well. So Waterloo going to start with the football first on first down here at their own 31. Bring your broadcast action here on Jeff Brooks on the camera, Matt Weavering to my side. I'm Mike James. Thanks for joining us. First down, they're going to put it up in the air, and they're going to go downfield to the middle. A nice snag. Still on his feet. Finally dragged down about the 43-yard line of the Cougars, and that's a pretty-looking pass and catch there for Waterloo to open this football game. Yeah, Jack St. Hilaire, nice hands there too to reach up on that one, but he was wide open there as well, and you mentioned that toss quite far down the field. Don't see that too often, especially on the first play of the game here. Waterloo does have the wind at their back. It's been fairly breezy today, a fairly consistent wind out of the east, so potentially could play a factor as this game goes on. So a fresh set of downs here for the Predators. They're going to hit the receiver coming across the formation. Looks like that was number 16, Connor Proschel with the snag. Yeah, they make him uh, stretch the field on the first play there and then just go a little cut to the outside this time, picking up some yards and uh, looks like maybe close to, and it will be another first down. Looks like Proschel was lined up in the slot, then came across the formation underneath the defense. Nice play on first down to get them a fresh set of downs. First time we're going to see Waterloo put the ball on the ground. Good defense that time from the Cougars. Men up front making the stop. Looked like that was uh, number 70 in on that tackle. Along with, uh, well, trying to get another number there, number five for the Cougars, Brendan Bondi and Thanosi Babalis. You're going to have to excuse us if we're a little bit slow with the numbers and names on the Cougars' side. They were forced to switch jerseys before this football game. They were going to be wearing their whites, but uh, Waterloo had their whites, so the Cougars were forced to switch over to their greens. So uh, some, some changes on our roster sheets. Second down here. Pass completed. Nice throw and catch for Waterloo. Looks like that's going to be close to a uh, first down, maybe uh, about uh, two yards short. Yeah, so it looks like you'd think. Yeah, they're waving back and trying to get the signal from the bench right now to see what they're going to do in this case. You'd think maybe with third down and two, it's short and you're deep in their territory, having a lot of success. You might just push for it here, and it looks like that's what they're going to do. It doesn't look like they're lining up for a field goal at this point. Waterloo on their opening drive, going to go for it here. Being led by their big quarterback, Andrew Brush, number 10. Brush going to drop back in the pocket, look to the outside, and nice big snag on the far side of the field. Nice grab there, and that's enough for a first down. Boy, a nice catch there. Looked like that might have been Aiden Carter who went up to get it and uh, brought it down along that far sideline. Yeah, it'll be first and goal now as they, their risk paid off for them there. Nice pass to the outside, but they've been finding a lot of success, and these Cougars defenders are going to have to do a better job of just getting in between the quarterback and the ball there and uh, in front of their man as they try to tighten up their coverage. So first and goal here for Waterloo, and they're going to hand it off. Good pressure into the backfield. Dragged down. About the line of scrimmage. Looked like that was number 32 getting in the, into the backfield for the Cougars. Jared Millard. Nice tackle there coming from behind on the backside. Good pursuit by Millard. 
Yeah, run defense seems pretty strong so far for the Cougars. Able to wrap them up pretty quickly, although uh, the Waterloo team is going towards the center quite often with those runs, so they're going to run into a lot of coverage up the middle. So second and goal here from about the seven-yard line. Brush is going to take it shotgun. They're going to hand it off up the middle. Oh, a nice stutter step and into the end zone. Absolutely freezes the linebacker. And in for the score. Uh, it looked like, looked like it was Evan Bender. Evan Bender was the one with the ball there. As he just, as you mentioned, nice stutter step move there by him. And we've seen earlier the Cougars able to wrap up those running backs pretty quickly. But this time he found some room. It's difficult when those goal posts are also lined up right there. It's almost like you got a little bit of more, another obstacle to move around if you're a defender backpedaling. Yeah, line up for the extra point. Nice snap and hold, and it's up and good. Beautifully executed. So Waterloo wastes no time whatsoever. Their opening drive, they march down the field, completing every pass and able to eventually punch it in for the score was Evan Bender. Boy, with that beautiful stutter step, too, right in the hole. And as a defender, that is just so tough. You're almost stuck flat-footed, and Bender just ate up the defender and able to trod into the end zone and boy an impressive start here from the Waterloo Region Predators. And they were able to set the tone early with that big long pass that they had just uh, really gets in the minds of the defenders. A couple other short passes uh, to the outside where they were able to pick up a couple yards just on some short passes too so it gets you thinking when you get some success like that too they got to give you that dual threat they can take it on the ground or they can pass it out as well so I have a feeling the Cougars might have been prepared for more of a pass there to try to get it into the end zone. Well, I can tell you so far in that first drive alone, the quarterback, Andrew Brush, looks to have a good, strong arm, good, strong pocket presence, and uh, obviously has a good set of receivers that he trusts because he was able to spread the ball all over the place on that opening drive on their way to that major. So the Predators going to kick this one off now to the Cougars. The line drive kick. It's bobbled by the Cougars, finally scooped up by number eight, Patrick Wilcox. Wilcox... Trying to return it along that far side. Looks like he's going to get to his own 26-yard line. That's where the Cougars are going to take over for their opening drive on offense. Yeah, he was able to salvage that, as you mentioned. Nice uh, low driving kick by Waterloo to make it bounce a little bit, and he fumbled it a bit as he touched it, but then able to recover and still pick up a couple yards with themselves in decent field position as they start this drive with their first look at the offense. So the Cougars break the huddle. Going to go with two men in the backfield flanking the receiver. Three receivers in motion. One man behind the quarterback, and that snap is offline. And immediately jumping onto it is the quarterback for the Cougars, Evan Torres. And the Cougars... Going to have to regroup here after that snap was offline. And it was so offline, too, and just a bobble, too. He, the only thing he could really do was jump on that and make sure it didn't turn into anything worse. And they're going to be staring at second and very long here. Well, that's going to bring up a second and very, very long here for the Cougars after that. Snap was offline. Torres is going to take this one cleanly. Now he's going to look down that left side, looking deep for a receiver. Oh, just overthrows his man. Good coverage on that far side there as well. That pass intended for Ben Barnard, but it falls just incomplete. And the Cougars are going to go two and out here. They're going to be forced to punt this one away. Yeah, tough to time a long toss like that. And you give your wide receiver a little bit of room to run, two to catch up to it as he tossed the nice up there for him and hung up there. But uh, just couldn't manage to get his hands on that one. And so they were in a tough position already. Now they're going to have to kick it away. And I think Waterloo will be in good shape uh, going back the other way. So we'll get a... Early look at the kicking game here from the Cougars from their own end zone. Now they're going to give up the two points on the safety. They'll take a knee in the end zone, so they'll trade the two points for field position and 
force Waterloo all the way back to their side of the football field. And those two points add to the Predators' lead, makes it now 9 to nothing. And that opening snap from the offense, too, just proving even more costly when you put yourself in that position way back there and pinned in deep. You force yourself to make maybe a big throw, just miss out on that, too. So a couple bobbles by the uh, China Can Cougars to start this one after Waterloo looking dangerous early. So we'll get a second look now at that Waterloo offense, which was very impressive in the opening drive. If I recall correctly, they went four for four on passing plays with a couple of really, really nice highlight reel catches and, uh, and then a pretty solid running game to add to that that uh, resulted in the major on their first offensive possession. First and 10 now for Waterloo at their own 35-yard line. They're going to hand it off on the man coming in motion across the offense and good defense there from the Cougars. Good-looking tackle from number 22, Jackson Roundtree, and a minimal gain. Yeah, they tried to go wide on him, and uh, after going up the middle for the last couple times, able to find a short gain there, but really not much at all as the Cougars able to pin him down, maybe made some adjustments after they were able to spend some time on the sidelines. Well, that stop right there maybe helps your defense maybe take a breath and kind of regain their composure after uh, Waterloo marched down the field on that opening drive. Second and 10 now for the Predators. They're going to put it up in the air. They're going to go deep down this left side. He's got a man, and he just overthrows him intended that time for number 84 Aiden Carter in on the coverage 23 for the Cougars Quinton Emmerich yeah he had one thing in his mind the whole time you could watch the quarterback's eyes didn't scan the field at all and he's making some quick decisions so you have to think he might be first place he looks is going to be the place he throws it so keep an eye on that uh, going forward as well he makes quick decisions but you might be able to read his eyes a little bit more quickly that way as well so that's a good stand there for the Cougars, able to regroup after that uh, opening touchdown drive for Waterloo. And this snap is wide and high and now bobbled, and the Cougars are going to pick it up. Well, that's big for Chatham-Kent. Number 11 able to scoop it up for the Cougars. Unfortunately, with the jersey change, we're not exactly sure who number 11 is. Well, oh, we're, we're being, oh, we're being told Bennett Schaefer. No, he's been crossed off. Again, we'll get that information to you when we have it, unfortunately, because of some jersey changes. Nonetheless, number 11 able to jump on the loose football, and that's a big play for the Cougars. Absolutely. Waterloo was able to take advantage of a an errant snap by the Cougars on their first offensive possession. Now the Cougars able to take advantage of an errant snap by Waterloo, and now they're knocking on the door. Yeah, defense with some nice stops, and then they put their offense in a good position here by the, making that recovery. So the Cougars go shotgun. They were going to put that ball in the air. Evan Torres was scanning the field, but we've got a flag. There was some motion before the play. I have a feeling it was offside on one of the receivers on the far side there as they were coming across up to the line. Looked like they maybe got a little bit too far up on the play before the ball was snapped. Yeah, offside against the Cougars. So they'll match that one, march that one back. That's going to bring up a first and 15 now. Ball at the 15 yard line. Torres in shotgun formation. One back behind him. He is going to hand it off. Trying that left side, but good penetration by Waterloo. With the carry was Jonathan Cartier, but nowhere to go. Yeah, he tried to go backwards too. And once you start going backwards, you're you're gonna put yourself in more trouble. You're going the wrong way on the field. I know he's looking for a hole, but you gotta still maybe wait in place then and try to move forward. But he had a little stutter step to the left and he backed up a little bit. And by that time, Waterloo already had some good penetration, able to come in there and meet him in the backfield and I'll push him back even further now. Yeah, good push up front there from that Predators defense. And uh, the Cougars right now moving in the wrong direction. Second and 20. 
Torres going to put it up in the air, looking down the right side. Oh my goodness, there is definitely a flag there. That's no doubt pass interference. And uh, the defender would not allow the receiver to get past him. And that's an easy flag for the official. That pass was headed in the direction for Ethan Jordan, but uh, Jordan tangled up with the defender there. And that's uh, where you're seeing that flag. Yeah, it looked like number 40, Zivian Daughtry there, just blocking him off. And I think he maybe got caught watching the ball instead of watching uh, the man he was supposed to be covering. So it looked like he was looking up, and that's why uh, Torres ran into him there. And uh, it was uh, just wasn't able to get by him, so he got knocked down. And then we're going to have a good penalty here for the Cougars. There we go. It's a pass interference call. That ball, or the line of scrimmage now is going to be down at the five-yard line. So fresh set of downs now for the Cougars. First and goal from the five. Again, following that pass interference call against Waterloo on a pass intended for Ethan Jordan, who uh, got tangled up with the defender who was flagged. So Torres in shotgun formation, going to take snap, scanning the field, going to put it up in the air, and it's deflected and falls incomplete. Going to make it second and goal now for the Cougars. Yeah, it looked like it was going right up there. That hand shot up there and tipped that ball out of reach for the Cougars. So they didn't really have any chance to reel that one and looked like they had a man sprinting down that far side and it was a quick throw too. So had a good chance at it, but the defender there just did a good job of throwing his hand up. It looked like Torres was trying to fit that one into a tight window. That one seemed to have a little bit of smoke on it and got deflected by one of the Preds defenders. So second and goal here for the Cougars. Torres going shotgun again, deep back behind him. And they are gonna hand it off to that deep back, trying to find a spot. But good penetration there from the D, and unfortunately for Jonathan Cartier, he's tackled for a loss. Yeah, second time now that he's been caught sort of running backwards, and I don't know if that's just the way he's looking at the line. Line's being pushed back maybe, so he's not seeing much room about uh, where to go in the first place, so he's just trying to go out wide and uh, trying to cut back a little bit in order to make that room for himself. But again, wrapped up around his ankles there smartly by the defender, and uh, that puts the Cougars in a kicking position you know yeah good shoestring tackle there from the defender and as you say Matt Kurtz here just didn't have any room to run in the middle and tried to bounce it outside and good play there on the tackle by Waterloo able to get a hand on the shoestrings and uh, drag him down and force the Cougars into a field goal attempt oh that's beautifully executed great snap Right on the spot, pinned down, and then the kick by Cameron Creechin is up and good by a mile. And the Cougars on the board for the first time. They trail the Waterloo Region Predators 9-3. Yeah, you basically get that offense within, I think, 45 yards, and you're going to be able to look at at least a field goal from him. He's got a leg on him. I saw him earlier in practice kicking from about 45 and uh, looked pretty good out there. So Waterloo's going to take the football at the 35-yard line. And the Predators making a late substitution here. Okay, the Predators first and 10 now after that timeout. Bush gonna look to put it in the air. Nice ball on the run. Oh, and it's right on the money. Beautiful throw and catch caught by Jack St. Hilaire. That's who he hit on his first throw of the game, too, was Jack St. Hilaire going that way on the far side. And so another big toss from that quarterback from Andrew Brush. Uh, this time on the run, we saw him throw a number of uh, passes quickly so far in this one. This time, he took a little bit more time for the play to develop, and he was running to his right. And even though he's mid stride, was able to toss that one down the field. Oh, no, it's a perfectly thrown football. I can tell you right now the defensive backs for the Cougars have made a mental note that Andrew Brush has an arm, and they're going to have to be wary. 
he can air it out and he can put it on uh, on a spot. First and 10 now for the Predators after that long game. They're going to swing it out wide to the receiver. Put it in the hands of number 13, Nigel Morris. The nice pickup on first down. Gain of about eight yards there on that pitch and catch. Yeah, first time we've seen that kind of action from the Waterloo team out here. It looks like he took a little bit of damage there too. Number 13, Nigel Morris, who caught the ball in the backfield and was able to make a couple yards. Cougars able to limit the damage and hold him to a second down here, but at the same time, Waterloo, everything's clicking for them right now. Well, you mentioned Morris banged up after that catch and tackle. He just went straight to the sidelines and look like looks like he's uh, having his ankle looked at by the trainer right now. So they make a quick substitution. Second down and three here from Waterloo. And they're going to go to the ground, looking to run it up the middle. And good job by that D right in the middle with the stuff. That carry, Evan Bender. And that's, oh, they're going to say it was Colby Van Bargen with the carry, actually, the fullback. And that's a fresh set of downs, just enough. So first and 10 here for the Predators at the Cougar 35 and this Waterloo offense marching again. Yeah, tough to see where he fell there, but that would have been a big third down and the Cougars, you know, could have had a chance for a big stop instead looking at a first down here. They go shotgun and they're gonna fake the handoff then go straight to the air, ooh. That's still a pretty good looking pass intended for number 84, Aiden Carter. Although that is a tough spot for a receiver when you got to stretch your arms out like that and you know you got a defender coming right in your face, it really exposes the rib cage. Uh, yeah. And uh, Aiden Carter might have pulled his hands in just a little bit there as that ball was coming in. I think so. And just the fact that he was running toward the ball as well in mid stride as he's coming at it, the ball's coming at him, he's coming at the ball. Tough to make that catch, especially when it's so high like that. Yeah. And you hear those footsteps of that defender coming at you from the middle. Brush going to. Move around in the pocket and scan the field. He decides he doesn't see anything he likes, so he tucks and runs. And the big man, number 10, able to run it up the gut for a first down. Yeah, he's showing some, showing something everything here. He's going to air it out. That time it didn't look like a design run. It looked like he just didn't see anything he liked down the field. And was able to find some room up the middle and use his legs, and he's a big guy out there. You can see he's almost ahead head above everybody, even on his own team in the backfield there. Yeah, it looks like he's got good pocket awareness as well. He could feel the pocket kind of caving in on him, so he just tucked and ran and did a good job. So he's going to take that ball, roll out to the right, looking to air this one out. If he can find anyone, he's being pursued from behind. Finally dragged down. Good job by the defense. And... We'll just have to see where they mark this one. That's going to be the last play of the first quarter. And that's a gain of about five yards. Second second and five, they're going to say. Yeah, Evan Clark was <laughs> right on his heels there. And he had to really turn on the afterburners to catch up to him because he was almost off to the races, had some help from one of his teammates there for coming in from the front as well. But uh, I had to wonder if he was just going to air it out. He's shown a couple times now already he can throw on the run like that and accurately. Well, that was a quick moving first quarter. Well played, clean football. And uh, looks to be a good one here after that first 12 minute quarter. Waterloo certainly looks to be very potent on offense with, uh, with a quarterback that's really got a good arm and has some weapons to spread the ball around too. So Cougars gonna have to tighten up uh, their secondary a little bit, it looks like, uh, to kind of limit Waterloo's opportunities in the air, maybe force them to put the ball on the ground a little bit more. And mistakes really cost them both teams. It uh, cost the Predators there three points on that field goal when they bobbled that snap back when they were gonna punt it away. And then the Cougars as well, pinned in deep in their own side when they had a missed snap too. So some of those mistakes cost in both teams early so far in this one. So Waterloo is going to break the huddle here. Second and five at the Cougars 20 yard line. Waterloo goes shotgun and Brush is going to scan the field. He's got a receiver out there wide looking to 
pick up. Oh, there's a fumble after a big hit by the Cougars. Who's able to jump on it? There's a pile there. Wow, a big stick by the Cougars after that pass was completed. But it looks like Waterloo was able to maintain possession and jump on that football. Yeah, just again, you got to capitalize on some of these chances that you have there. I mean, you know, the Cougars back there just looking up to the sky. You can see that Jack, that, uh, Jack St. Hilaire was the one who caught it there. And then it looked like it was uh, Connor Wright, I think, again, making a big play. He was able to wrap him up around his ankles. And just as he was stretching for those extra yards, ball got punched out. And then one of the Predators, though, coming back to recover that ball. Wow, that's a big break for them. So that was enough for a fresh set of downs. First down now for Waterloo at the Cougars 15. They're going to hand it off, keep it on the ground. Good job there by the Cougars defense, though, getting into the backfield. And finally dragged down. Looks like it was Evan Clark in on the tackle with a few other Cougar defenders. And even the couple of the first guys who touched him weren't the ones who took him down. So there was a couple of guys who were in there just giving that extra pressure. So the defensive line really starting to lock in there and close down on these running backs uh, pretty quickly. Second and nine here for Waterloo. Lead this one nine to three in the second quarter. And they're going to pitch it outside to the running back, see if he can't find any room, but nowhere to go. Nice job. In on the tackle there, first man was 84, Lucas Doyle did a great job shedding the blocker and then gets in on the tackle. Yeah, so the Predators going on the ground a couple times there when they're in deep and you'd think that with their success in the air they might start passing things up but maybe they're trying to just uh, punch things in too. They had some success with that on their first score so once they get in tight, watch out for those running backs. Waterloo making some substitutions there on this Third down and seven, so it looks like they're going to go for the field goal. Looks like it's number nine who's the kicker there, James Wilson. A high snap, but good job by the holder to snag it out of the air, put it down, and it is good. So put another three points on the board for the visiting Predators who now lead this one 12 to three with 9.16 to play in the first half. Yeah, important for Waterloo still just to make it that two score game to keep them just outside of striking distance for the Cougars. So Cougars are gonna try to march things back up the field now and they had a better field position in the first time that they scored points, so we'll have to see if they can have some success here. Last time, they were this deep in their own territory, and they didn't have much uh, going for them. They had a missed snap, and that turned into a, a safety going back, giving two points the other way. Well, decent job there by the defense. You bend, but don't break. You just give up the three as opposed to the major and uh, keep this a 12-3 game. You don't want to get too far out of hand and make your offense too predictable and uh, right now you can just allow your team still to settle in at 12 to 3 and kind of operate your game plan as you would normally. And even build on some of those positives you didn't recover that football but uh, you did manage to punch it out and force that fumble that he's going to be number 11 for the other team Jack St. Hilaire next time he touches the ball he's going to be thinking about that last fumble he had there. So the Cougars go shotgun here. Torres going to fake the handoff to the man coming across the motion. And the ball up in the air. Oh, nearly a highlight reel grab by Ethan Kupka. But just couldn't hold on to it as he came to the ground. And then the ground forces the ball out of his hands. Yeah, he just didn't have enough time to reel that one into his chest and pin it in tight. He was still holding on to it outstretched as he met the ground. And a defender was on him, but... Still, he was in a good position there. As you mentioned, nice toss, too. Pretty much perfect. He just couldn't grab that one and haul it in. Yeah, and pretty good coverage there, too, from the Waterloo defender. Uh, so that all certainly played into that pass falling incomplete. Second and 10 now for the Cougars. Torres dropping back. Looking to his right this time and going deep. He's got two defenders in the same vicinity. One closest to it looked to be like it was... Uh, Number 10 out there, Ethan Jordan, I believe, was the closest receiver, or, excuse me. Number 
Yeah, it was Ethan Jordan who was the closest receiver to that pass, but just a little bit overthrown by Evan Torres. And he's one of those guys who can make a play for you, so I'm not surprised to see them go to him on a situation like that, trying to get down the field. Now it looks like they're going to be punting it, and they got the wind at their back now too, so they'll have that advantage at least. If they can kick it up in the air at all, it should help to carry down the field. So the Cougars set to punt this one away. Good snap and good hold and good kick. It's going to bounce in front of the return man. He's going to try this near side. We got a flag that comes out right away and a lot of room to move for the return man. Boy, good return there. I got a feeling on this one, I don't want to call it out too early, but it may be a block in the back on uh, on Waterloo over here because it looked like one of the Cougars was backing up a little bit as he was, and they're pointing into that same area. So I'm starting to wonder if this ball is going to be coming back quite a bit. Yeah, I think that's going to be, uh, as you mentioned, either a hold or a block in the back against Waterloo. There's no doubt it's it's coming back, and it is a hold. There's the call. It's a 10-yard penalty, and... Waterloo's going to have to move back. Yeah, so big break for the Cougars now, though, as Waterloo pinned way back compared to where they would have been. Waterloo, after the penalty on the uh, punt return, going to start at their own 25-yard line. Brush going to put this one in the air on the near side here. Couple blocks for his receiver. It was 84, Eden Carter with the reception. Defense really seemed to be settling in here now for the Cougars after a bit of a shaky start and the Waterloo just carving them up and now Cougars seem to be reacting quite well. I think they're reading some of the plays a little bit better and starting to get that early contact. Well, Aiden Carter is starting to rack up some yards here through the air. It's proven to be, uh, I think, one of Andrew Brush's favorite targets. Second and five here for Waterloo. Brush getting set. Take that. Shotgun, he's going to roll out to his left, throwing across his body. Got a receiver out there and a beautiful throw and catch. Well executed play there. Have to get a number on the receiver over there that made that snag. I have a feeling it was number 11. I'm pretty sure it looked like Jack St. Hilaire, and he's made a number of those catches down the field, too. He's a big, tall guy. This time it looked like Jackson Roundtree just got caught a little bit stumbling, too, as the ball came in there. And uh, St. Hilaire, yeah, he just stopped there in, in his tracks as he was sprinting down the field, and that caught the defender off balance. Well, and it's really an impressive throw by Brush because he's rolling across his body. He's rolling out to his left, but he throws with his right and just able to fire a dime to his receiver, really, really sharp stuff. First and 10, Waterloo. Brush scanning the field, he's got pressure, he evades it, he's looking for a receiver, he's gonna tuck it and run, and good job by the defense to corral him for a short gain. Picks up about three yards on that scramble. Yeah, still to pick up a couple yards, but as you mentioned, limiting the damage there, they're able to knock him down and every hit to the quarterback if you got a chance to do it. Especially a guy like that, you want to bang him up, especially early in this game. And he uh, was looking down the field, as you mentioned, a couple times too, and he's shown that he doesn't matter if he's going to his right or his left, he can pass that ball off. Brendan Bonney also assisted on that after about a game of about three. Yeah, there's no doubt as a defender, you're licking your chops anytime the quarterback's carrying the football and you can uh, and you can put a good hit on him and remind him that you're, uh, that you're just there waiting for him and hopefully you can affect his, uh, his play a little bit with a big hit. Brush gonna roll out to his right and that is incomplete. Looked like uh, Jack St. Hilaire had a chance at making that grab, but uh, 
Just couldn't scoop it up close to the ground. Would have been a nice grab, but uh, couldn't hold on. That's the second play in a row, though. Number 33 there, Chase Topic, has come in there and just really finds some good penetration. That time on the, the quarterback's blind side, he was coming right up behind him, and he, he must have felt the footsteps coming, too. I think that's why he had to pass it off, because he was just about to wrap him up there. Waterloo forced now to punt this one away, third and seven. One man back deep for the Cougars. Nice high kick hanging. It's clocked cleanly by the return man. See if he can't get some speed, but wow, that's some good coverage there from Waterloo. And nowhere to go for Patrick Wilcox. Yeah, we've seen him with some speed in previous games, haven't we? He's got some speed when he can get the ball and that hung up there, as you mentioned, giving him lots of time to set up underneath it, grab the ball and look up the field. But that's a great job by the defenders there for the Predators, wrapping him up early because he was just get, hitting his stride as he was taken down. So the Cougars deep in their own territory. First and 10 from about the 21 yard line. And they're gonna hand this off. It was bobbled for a second there by the running back, but able to hold on to it was Garrett Stonefish. Yeah, there we go. First time I think we've seen him touch the ball here today, and he's one of those big guys that you can hand the ball back to and punch it in for a couple yards. That, that time able to push his way for about six or seven yards almost. Yeah, and Stonefish, that's a pretty good job by Stonefish to pick up six yards when you bobble that carry right off the hop in that exchange with the quarterback because it certainly throws off your concentration. But good job by him to uh, corral that football and then uh, pick up some positive yards. Second down here, Torres going to hand it off, and... Boy, good job there by Waterloo. Not much doing that time by Stonefish. Yeah, Cougars shut down with a couple passes earlier on, and this time a couple run plays. Just trying to find some success there. Stonefish, as you mentioned, on that first down, able to find some room. But the second time, Waterloo adapted, and they were able to wrap him up quickly. It was a terrific job there by the Waterloo defender who was on the edge, held on to his blocker and then shed him just as Stonefish was trying to cut underneath and force the Cougars into a punting situation here, third and four. And that wind is still swirling up there. We're getting some gusts up here in the booth, but mostly uh, you think to the back of the Cougars, so should help with this kick. We have a flag there, that return by Devontae Russell. Well done and forced out of bounds by Jackson Roundtree. Yeah, somewhat fortunate on that play that the punter didn't uh, have to make a quick decision to abandon the kick there as he sort of bobbled the ball as well. He was able to find his footing though and had enough time to give credit to his offensive line, giving him enough time there to make the adjustment and still get the ball away. And it's holding is going against Waterloo. These penalties starting to prove costly for Waterloo on these returns. I mean, the return guy is doing a great job of bringing the ball down the field, and then all of a sudden, referees get involved, throwing a flag on a hold, and they're just going to bring it all the way back 10 yards. First down, Waterloo. Waterloo going to start this drive at the Cougars 50 yard line after that penalty. And Brush is going to drop back, scan the field. He's looking to his left and that's a good looking throw oh, and it hit his receiver right in the hands and just could not hold on to it. Looks like it might have been Nigel Morris there. First time I think that he's been targeted here tonight. 
And, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, just could not grab that one. He was wide open, though, and that passed right into his chest. I think it's maybe one of those times you got a little bit too much time to think about what you're going to do when you turn up the field because you see that and it just looks so great. And you had a defender on you, but at the same time, he's got to do better with that ball. After the drop pass, second and ten now. And Brush scanning the left side of that field again. Oh, and that's a nicely thrown ball right into the midst of number 11, Jack St. Hilaire. That guy's showing you he can reach up and grab that ball. And I think oftentimes he throws it that high just because he feels comfortable enough in number 11. He's tall enough, too. He can get up there above the defenders. So it's the safest place to throw it to him. Yeah, Hilaire is a big, nice big target, isn't he? He's... Uh, He's easy to spot out there on the field. And uh, those quarterbacks, you love a nice big target that you can throw the football to with a big catch radius. And uh, Hilaire puts those big mitts up there. And uh, he's certainly one of the bigger bigger players on the football field. Not just one of the bigger receivers, but one of the bigger players. Boy, oh boy, Brush is scrambling for safety. <laughs> Wow, Brush showing, showing some athleticism there for a big man. Didn't see anything he liked and ran up the middle of the field, then retreated and tried to get the corner. But uh, pretty good job there by Brush. Well, we've heard a number of uh, you know fans earlier too when he was running backwards. <laughs> what are you doing taking it back this way? You got to go the other way, man. But he found some room still and didn't get uh, hit back there. Didn't have to pay for that. And yeah, he's used uh, used his legs a couple times now and shown his quick thinking and his ability to read the field even when he's a runner. So after that run, it was a gain of about two yards, second and eight now. Brush is going to scan the field again, going shotgun, looking for somebody on the left side. Had some pressure in his face, but delivers on the money. Wow. Brush had pressure coming at him right in his face. And as he was almost falling backwards, was able to sling that one out, showing his arm strength, getting it out to his receiver right on target. And enough for a first down. Yeah, Aiden Carter that time, 84 for the Predators, able to reach out and snag that one in. And you got to give credit to quarterback and wide receiver teaming up for that one. Both of them making a phenomenal play there to stretch the field and uh, bring it into scoring position here. Waterloo marching again, just inside the Cougars' 15 yard line. High snap, Rush able to corral it, and they're going to put it on the ground and the Cougars doing a good job as they have so far this game doing a pretty good job on the ground minimal gain there they're gonna mark it at about two yards bringing up a second and eight yeah they were on them early early contact and just get that running back thinking and get some hands on them and they were able to tie him up there early on the ground and we'll have to see if they go back to the air here I'm looking at big number 11 as he's coming out wide this way yeah, that uh, I think that might be Brush's favorite target. See if he doesn't look for number 11 on this one. Second and eight, scanning. Brush is looking for his receiver, and that was intended for, as you mentioned, St. Hilaire, number 11, but that throw was low and might have been affected by the defenders in the area. Yeah, I think so. It's not the way you want to throw it to him down by his feet, get it up in the air, and he'll yeah. grab it, but uh, no chance for him to catch that there. Good job by the defender. He's able to hold them again uh, with a couple of downs there deep in their territory, in Cougars' territory. So Waterloo makes a couple of substitutions here. Looks like they're going to attempt the field goal once again. Already have one in this game. James Wilson, the kicker for Waterloo. Well, that's a good looking kick and it's up and good. Good job by the holder there as well, Devontae Russell, to snag that snap and get it down. And that extends the lead for Waterloo to 15-3 with 1.26 to play in the first half. Yeah, about 90 seconds now for the Cougars to do something, bring it back the other way. And so far, uh, not finding too much success with the offense, but we are going to see if they can find something to click uh, to end out this first half here. Yeah, the Cougars really just haven't seemed to find their groove. Uh, I, I want to say really since that the opening play of this football game, 
they started off with a wide snap to Evan Torres where he was forced to just jump on the football and they lost about 15 yards and they were pinned deep in their own end and it just doesn't seem like they've been able to regroup since. Waterloo's done a great job on defense, pinning the Cougars deep in their own territory on a couple of occasions and you, you just feel like you got the goal line breathing down your neck and you you really are, are forced into a difficult situation. So Waterloo as the road team have really done a great job of uh, limiting the opportunities of the Cougars on offense and uh, Chatham Kent just hasn't been able to get any kind of groove on offense so far this first half. First and 10 here from the 35 for Chatham Kent. And you go to the air, Torres looking underneath and just nobody there. That one short hops to the, what looked like was the intended receiver, Ethan Jordan, number 10. But uh, I don't know if there was some miscommunication there or not. I don't know, but they're going for a no huddle here. They know what they wanted to do. They drew it up already before they came out here. So in this case, uh, I think they're gonna have to keep stretching it down, the time ticking down. Uh, there's a flag. Torres was looking down that right sideline for Ethan Jordan and looked like Jordan just ran right into the defender and was looking for the football. The flag came out. Not sure if they're going to say that Jordan interfered with the defender who was looking to make a play on the ball. No, they're going to say it was the defender that interfered with Jordan. So it's a pass interference call and the Cougars are gonna get a fresh set of downs. And when you're looking at number 10 out there, Ethan Jordan, I mean, keep looking at that guy because he's got that athletic skill. He can make a play like that. Second time now that pass interference has been called against a defender who's covering him. So keep looking at him out there. He can make those plays, and even though he didn't catch the ball there, still moving it down the field. Well, first and 10 here from their own 40 yard line for the Cougars. Ooh, they're gonna look to throw it to this left side intended for Patrick Wilcox, but I don't know if Torres was expecting Wilcox to break back to the outside after breaking to the inside, but a little bit off target there. Yeah, it looked like he threw him a little bit high, and uh, it must have been a miscommunication there because you could see even just the way that Wilcox looked at him afterwards, he clearly had misread the, what he was supposed to do on that play, or at least it was just a miscommunication between the quarterback and his wide receiver there. Back from the timeout now. Cougars second and 10. And they're gonna fake the handoff. Torres is gonna roll to his right. He's got a receiver out there. Oh, and it's through the outstretched hands of Ben Bernard. There was a defender out there as well. So I'm not sure what kind of damage Bernard would have been able to do, but it falls incomplete and the Cougar is going to be forced to punt this one away third and ten. Yeah, just too much pressure on the quarterback there too. Well, the guy got through and he was running back, pedaling there, just trying to make some room and had to make a quick decision. And when you're throwing off your back foot as you're stepping back like that, it's really tough to get the ball on target and with the distance that he's looking for. Two return men back for Waterloo. Good snap, good clean catch and a nice high punt down that right side. Cougars in on coverage. Good job there. Pretty decent return by Waterloo. Nice Waterloo. Devontae Russell, the return man there, number 15. And Lucas Doyle made the stop. So we're under a minute to play in the first half. And Waterloo, the road team, has come in so far and been pretty impressive on offense. A couple of drives they've had to settle for field goals, lead this one 15-3. Efficient defense from them on that last drive too. You know, 30 seconds comes off the clock. You still give yourself just under a minute to try to make a play down the field here. And this plays to the strength of their quarterback, Andrew Brush. He's got a strong arm and uh, doesn't have any problem driving this team down the field with the, uh, with the throwing, throwing game that he's got. And it sounds like uh, the Cougars have uh, called a timeout here.
So after that return on the punt, Waterloo first and 10 from their 33 yard line. Brush fakes the handoff to the man coming across the formation, then hands it off to the back, who has a nice pickup there. Pickup of about 15 yards on that first down run. I think kind of caught the Cougars off guard a little bit considering how much time was left in this first half. I think Cougars were thinking that ball was going in, going in the air. Nice job by Waterloo. Yeah, I thought the ball might be going in the air just to pick up a first down instead to go to the ground. So catch him flat footed a little bit. Brush now goes to the air. That pass a little bit behind his intended receiver. Keaton Merriman and uh, tried to reach back to grab it, but goes uh, goes through his hands as he uh, tries to adjust and catch that ball behind him. Yeah, it was a laser, and uh, luckily for him and the quarterback as well, the defender was on the inside of him there, so even though the ball bounced off his hands, it was no danger after that deflection. Second and 10. Brush looking the middle of the field. Oh, and that's wide of his intended receiver. That was intended for, I believe, Devontae Russell, the running back. But uh, off the mark, and well, good job by the Cougars defense here and force Waterloo to a punt. Yeah, the quarterback had to make some quick decisions there and was able to throw the ball off a couple times after that first big run when they got torched. After that, defense locked it in and shut them down on the pass, and now they're going to get the ball back one more time before half. We'll see if the Cougars maybe can't get a spark from special teams. Oh, and there's a Aaron. The punter wasn't able to make a clean catch on the ball. And now Wilcox with a nice return down the left sideline and steps out of bounds. Got to wait on the flag here. Flag on that return. Yeah, the referee what? threw in the area of where the kicker, of the where the kicker was doing, for going for a punt there, and at that time being quite pressured. So yeah, I'm, well, not, I'm not sure what the call is going to be here. Yeah, well, was the punter bobbled the football and then had to tuck and run it and then made the adjustment to kick it afterwards, which was a nice job by the punter to able to get it away. Now the officials are meeting to... A hit to the head, they're gonna say, against the Cougars. So they're gonna say that Jonathan Cartier struck the punter in the head as he was making the hit. So it's a 15 yard penalty against the Cougars and boy with 26.8 seconds to go, you're not really expecting much at this point considering where you're where you're getting the football. Yeah, again, push back those 15 yards makes a big difference. You know, their kicker's got quite the leg on him, but I don't think uh, barring a big play here from the Cougars, they're gonna have to look quite far down the field in order to get anywhere in field goal position here. Well, really too. and. You'd like to eat up some, some clock probably and actually maybe just get out of the half without having to give the ball back to Waterloo, trailing 15-3 in a game where you really haven't been able to do a lot offensively. And when there was 90 seconds left in this half, you <laughs> it was really motoring at that point, and all of a sudden the ball changes hands twice, the Cougars get the ball back again. So I wouldn't have really expected that with 129 left in this one. Going shotgun. They're going to hand it off. Keep it on the ground. And it was Cartier with the carry. And no gain there. And the Cougars just really at this point just want to run out the clock and get out of this half. So the Cougars 
forced to run this play now. Torres waiting on the snap. And they're going to hand it off. And good run there by Ben Bernard. And that's going to bring up third down now. With seven seconds to go here. Pick up of seven yards. I'll switch some personnel out there and kick this one away or even just run out the clock and see what you can do with seven seconds left kill it down all the way don't give the other team a chance to get the ball back well really you, if you're going to try and kick this I mean it, I guess it comes down to the skill of your kicker but you really just want to kick this out of bounds you, you don't want to give the, the other team a chance at any kind of a return and put any more points on the board in the last seven seconds of the first half and as you mentioned maybe the other play is to just kill out as much time as you can running the football around but you got to think they're going to kick it and there it is that's a booming kick too good looking kick over toward the sideline but it is returnable and good job on special teams with the coverage. And that is the end of the first half. So a little bit of confusion there at the end, but nonetheless, the first half comes to an end. And uh, Waterloo, the road team, nice job coming in here into hostile territory and putting up a pretty impressive show on offense and lead this one 15 to three. And early lead of nine, you know, nine nothing or nine three in this game early. So that was really what built it for them was that first drive, especially when they marched down the field and uh, really set the tone for this one. And then the Cougars couldn't come back and made some mistakes on offense as well that ended up costing them an extra two. So going down nine nothing early in this one, and then able to answer back with one field goal, but nothing much else past that. So they're gonna have to really flip the switch in the second half here and turn things on if they're going to want to come back in this one but so far yeah Waterloo looking very strong. So there's your first half action here varsity football the Chatham Kent Cougars hosting the Waterloo Region Predators. Cougars gonna certainly try to turn the tide here in the second half get uh, a little more rolling on offense as they trail Waterloo 15-3. We'll see you for second half action here. Welcome to second half action varsity football. The Chatham Kent Cougars hosting the Waterloo Region Predators. Predators kicking off here to the Cougars to start off the second half. Line drive kick taken cleanly by the Cougars down that left side. And decent return there for Jonathan Cartier. And that's where the Cougars are going to take control of this football to begin this second half and they trail Waterloo 15-3 see if the Cougars can't get something rolling here in the second half on offense one of the better returns we've seen from the Cougars anyway so it's a good way to start off the half for them and able to catch that ball cleanly out of the air and move it up the field for a decent return to start things off as they'll hand it off to their offense now So one deep back in the backfield. Oh, and boy, oh boy, that is not the way you want to start the second half after a poor start to the first half where you had an errant snap and now you've got a procedure call to start the second half. That is not not what you want to do. That's not how you, you kind of instill confidence in yourself and your offense when you shoot yourself in the foot. That's, uh, that's really tough. You know, and it's just a mental error. It's uh, it's self-inflicted. So make that first and 15 now to start off this second half. Cougars with the football at their own 28-yard line. Torres dropping back, looking to that left side. Got his receiver. And the pass is completed to Ben Bernard. Yeah, getting it up at least past the line of scrimmage there too and a little bit further so 
I pick up a couple yards on that play. A decent gain on the first yard, first down there. So put themselves in a decent position here for second down and manageable anyways after that, as you mentioned, that mental mistake on that first down. Yeah, they'll mark it as a seven-yard gain. So second and eight. Torres takes snap looking out here to this near side and oh it's underthrown and it's intercepted and the return still coming back and now we've got a flag I believe that's going to be a hit on a defenseless player I believe that flag is going to get go against Waterloo it was a block on a Blindside hit on a uh, defenseless defender who was trying to cover that interception return. So this one's going to go back against Waterloo. And yeah, that ball, as it was off the hands of the quarterback, Evan Torres just hung up there. And you have to wonder, the ball goes that high, if that wind coming right back at him just helped it to hang up there a couple extra seconds. And he just did not hit his man on that target either, though. Zivian Daughtry able to come down with that ball and turn it back the other way. And, yeah, as you mentioned, and, you know, mental mistakes for both teams starting to add up as the Predators were in really good position there after that interception, but now all of a sudden ball gets pushed back. Waterloo going to start this drive now on their own 50-yard line. Brush takes the snap, going to roll out to his left, going to throw across his body and off the hands of his intended receiver. Keaton Merriman. I have a number of those wide receivers still giving him a chance even on that play as he's rolling out to his left and was able to find somebody open still, even though the throw was a little bit off. Maybe the catch could have been a little, the catch attempt could have been a little better. Still, they are giving him some room out there and some targets. Well, this, uh, I wouldn't be surprised here. We see brush target number 11, big number 11 here on this near side, Jack St. Hilaire. Big second down here after that interception return. Want to keep this drive going for Waterloo. Oh, he's going to look to his right side, and they're going to say that's incomplete. Sounded like maybe one of the Cougars got their hands on that football. Yeah, it was nice coverage on the far side there, and the quarterback made a quick decision. He was looking to his right the whole way. He didn't even scan the field. Coming over here, number of receivers lined up on this side of the ball, but he was going to the right the whole way, and as you mentioned, incomplete. So another good stop by the Cougars as they look to turn this thing around. Yeah, that's a good job by the defense after the uh, Cougars turned that ball over on the interception. Punt this one away. Oh, that's a no good high deep punt backing up as Wilcox double clutches it and then pulls it in trying to get the edge, but he's being pursued and not able to get away. Good coverage there from Waterloo. And the Cougars going to take over here at their 22-yard line. Yeah, he's chased down right away, number 20, as he was trying to find some room, trying to burn him on the outside. He chased him right to the sidelines. And with that wide field out there, sometimes you do get that edge and find a little bit of room on the outside. But he was... Just going in sideways the whole way. Couldn't find any room up the field. Yeah, that wind is really seems to have picked up and is kind of swirling on the field. It feels like it could be a factor in, when they're putting that ball in the air. Well, the receiver there looked like he even had to back up a yard or two just to put yeah. himself in position as that ball went further than expected. Yeah, the Waterloo uh, Predators had the ball, the wind at their back, so the Cougars throwing into the wind right now. They're going to hand it off on the ground. Not a lot of room over there, though, for number 27, Garrett Stonefish. Yeah, he's trying to find some room in behind a block there, but ended up just sort of running into him, putting his hand out. Trying to spin off and find some room, but uh, got stopped up short there. And Waterloo has really done a good job limiting the Cougars' rushing attack so far today. So after that short gain, second and nine here for Chatham Ken. And they're going to pitch it outside. And oh, still on his feet. Nice run there. From number 24, Jonathan Cartier running over a defender, I believe. 
And that looks like that's enough for the... Well, I thought it was going to be enough for the first down. Now they do say it is enough for the first down. Yeah, as they walk it in, they get a better look at where that ball is going to be positioned uh, in, uh, in the field there. But, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, they had to take a couple looks at that one. It was, it was pretty close. Well, the Cougars could certainly use a couple of those here, a couple first downs and look to get something going, build a little bit of momentum, something they really haven't been able to do so far in this football game. Torres dropping back, scans to his left. Oh, nice move there. Believe it was Cartier. Yeah, nice little jump step backwards and able to pick up some extra yards after contact. Pick up about five yards on first down. Yeah, look to him again in the backfield. This time a nice little pitch to the outside and had some motion before the snap as well. Able to pick up a nice gain on first down there and Cougar is just starting to heat up a little here. Second in five. Torres is gonna hand it off. They're gonna keep it on the ground here. Near side, but nothing doing this time. Good defense from Waterloo. Cartier had nowhere to go. And now that's gonna bring up a third and five. Yeah, those uh, defenders lining up out wide. So as soon as he tried to go even further out this way toward the sideline. Just couldn't find any room there. He had to maybe look upfield a little bit earlier and try to find some room in behind a block. Cougars look like they've made the substitutions here to punt this one away now. Good snap, good clean kick, low kick, low line drive kick. Oh, it takes a bounce towards the sideline and steps out of bounds. That's a good job there by number 43, Elijah Martin, who forced the return man out of bounds. Yeah, don't doesn't take much then when he's running along the sideline like that, just a little touch and that's all he got on him and enough to push him outside and out of bounds as he was looking to find a little bit of room there, but that early touch was able to Stop to play dead in his tracks. Waterloo will start this drive at their 42 yard line. Brush fakes the handoff, then gives it to the deep man. The big hole on that left side. And that's a pickup of about 11 yards, and that's going to be enough for a first down. Yeah, Evan Bender just ducking inside that block and uh, give his teammates some credit there too for opening up that room for him as he was just able to find some room and didn't have to take it all the way out wide. First and 10, just their side of midfield. And looking to set up his blocks there, but good defense by the Cougars. Pick up of about uh, three yards there for Waterloo. A good defense. Yeah, big number 60 there pulled over, and he was coming to the outside to make a nice block. But uh, as you mentioned, the Cougars able to take a couple guys in there and just close it off before it could uh, move down the field even further. Still a short gain on first down, but nothing like we've seen earlier in this game. Second and seven here for the Preds. Brush takes a snap, looks to his left. Got a man out there. Oh, a nice stick. The pass was nearly broken up initially. Just missing it was Connor Wright. I think Connor Wright thought he might have a pick and just missed it. But nonetheless, good defense there from the Cougars brings up a third down. Yeah, right along the sidelines there too, it's important to knock that guy down because if he was able to get to his feet and just even stretch it out a couple yards, we'd be able to pick up that first down. Now they're looking at third and short and not making too many personnel changes. You have to wonder with the lead they have at this point and the offensive threats that they have and the success they've been finding, looks like they are gonna go for it. Yeah, third down, they're gonna go for it here inside the Cougars 50. 
Brush, one deep back behind him. He's going to hand it off, looking for a hole up the middle. I don't know if he got it. That's going to be close. Depends on the spot here from the official. That is going to be close. I think they may give him forward progress there. I don't know. I They're going to have to measure that one, I think. Yeah, he was pushed back, but at the same time, I think he may have stretched forward enough. At the point, yeah. You're gonna have to measure this one. I think I think you're right though, Matt. Looking at it from here, I think you're right. I think they've got just enough for the first down. Yeah, I think it was just that extra push he made to push that ball forward. Because again, the Cougars were able to turn him back, but at that point that they were able to push him back, I'm just not sure it was enough. Yeah, I got it by about a half a football length. So fresh set of downs here from the Cougars. Excuse me, for the Preds, fresh set of downs. 4.33 to go here in the third quarter. Waterloo leads this one 15-3. Again, this is varsity football action on your TV. Brush takes that snap shotgun and hands it off. Looking to gain that far side. Number 15, pretty good run there from Devontae Russell. Yeah, he just was able to find a little bit of room as he went uh, diagonally across the field there toward the sideline, but not straight out to the side. He was always moving forward and kept his feet moving there too. And nice gain on first down there. It was an injury timeout there. So second and two now for Waterloo. Brush kept it. He did not hand it off. Rolled out to his right, completed the pass. And that was a nicely designed play. And then at the end of that, it looks like the receiver tried to hurdle the defender during that tackle. Yeah, that was a nice fake. I must admit, I was <laughs> my eyes going the other way. The running back really sold it on that one too. And they have been... Doing a little bit of both so far this game, so you have to respect both options on the ground and out the air. So uh, they were able to get the ball out wide there and move it down on that second and two and pick up quite a few yards. Fresh set of downs, first and 10, Waterloo. Preds gonna pass it, some pressure in the pocket there. Brush is scrambling, gets it away, and there's nobody over there. No, he's not outside. No, the ball was. That ball incomplete, so good pressure there on Andrew Brush. Forced to throw that one away and brings up a second down here for the Cougars. And yeah, I think this is a pretty big sequence here for that defense. Try and limit Waterloo to a field goal attempt. Trailing 15-3 here as time ticks down the third quarter. Yeah, they tried to pull the same trick out again there as they tried to fake hand off. And don't be surprised if we see that again. Brush going to go to the air. He's got a receiver right there, right on the money, too. Hits him in stride. And that's going to be enough for a first down. Just pinpoint precision there from Andrew Brush finding his receiver. And just pitch and catch, and they just make it look very, very easy. This Waterloo offense very efficient through the air. No kidding, and he's going out wide. He's going down the field. He's doing these short passes right to the middle on a slant cut into the middle there. And so they're doing uh, a great job of adjusting to the way the Cougars are playing defense here. And the time keeps ticking down now too as they keep completing those passes. I need some big plays here from your defense. They're going to put the ball in the air here. Oh, and it hit the receiver coming across the middle on the slant, and that's a touchdown. Waterloo. Aiden Carter with the touchdown reception. And Waterloo adds to their lead. Now 21-3 with the extra point pending. 
Yeah, nice play there by the Predators. We saw them punch one in, in tight in the first half there as they just ran it in. This time, electing to go to the air again. And they've been finding a lot of success on just these short passes. And the quarterback again seems to have found his rhythm back. Extra point he is up and good. So you can add the single. It's now 22-3 for this visiting Waterloo Region Predators squad. And the Cougars have their work cut out for them here with 127 to go in the third quarter. At this point in the game, too, you have to wonder if it's going to take a little bit more than a couple defensive stops. It may take a turnover. They saw some missed opportunities in the first half for the Cougars there on the uh, forced that fumble, but just couldn't recover it uh, down on the other side, too. So to see what the Cougars can do here, but they're really going to need to turn it on and get some big plays down the field. Yeah, really, and, and you mentioned big plays. They just anything to get a spark at this point, you know, a uh, uh, big special teams return. You know, sometimes you just need one phase of your team to give you something, whether it be, like you said, a turnover or a big return on special teams or a big hit, something that you can kind of change the tide and uh, get something going, which is something that the Cougars have just struggled to do so far in this football game, and credit to Waterloo for that. So those Preds are going to kick this one off, leading 22-3. Two men back for the Cougars to return this kick. Low line drive kick, gonna bounce up, and good job there by, it looks like it's Wilcox who got it, got, getting the edge. Nice job by Wilcox there, good return. And tough to return that ball too when it's bouncing in like that. We saw that earlier too, a couple bobbles. When it's a low kick like that, and you'd have to wonder maybe they we're gonna use the wind to their advantage there as it was kicking off toward that way, but uh, the Cougars out with a decent return again as they look to turn it up the field. So Cougars offense here, 42 yard line, they'll start. It's their line of scrimmage, the sun setting in the background. Nice throw there over the middle, but good defense by Waterloo. The defender right there, no yards after the catch. Limiting that gain to about three yards. I expect we may see a couple of these hurry up offense now too, just with the amount of time, you know, only about one quarter left and Cougars need to make some time up on the, or some points up on the board. They're gonna keep the offense moving here if they can, even a short pass like that. Just get back out there and start another play. They're going to hand it off, keep it on the ground here. Cut it back inside. Nice run there. For the Cougars, Cartier. It's going to be just short, it looks like. Oh, no, they're going to say that's enough for a first down. Barring a penalty, this will be the last play of the third quarter. There he goes, a good pass and catch again. Looks like that was Ben Bernard with the reception. We had a flag come in there at the end. I wonder if that was a face mask. Yeah, the way he was tossed around, you have to wonder if there was something going down. There's a flag sitting on the field there still. So the referees are going to have to talk this one over and see what that was. Well, it seemed to me that the flag came out as Bernard was being tackled after the catch. So makes you wonder if maybe a defender didn't inadvertently maybe or purposely grab onto the face mask and the fact during the, the tackle. And yeah, and the fact that the flag was thrown in that same area too, yeah. I agree that there must have been something happening right there. Yeah, I mean, it's unless we have a replay, it's really hard for us to tell what exactly happened there. But uh, 
That's the end of the third quarter. So they'll add that penalty onto the end of the reception. And after that's all sorted out, the Cougars have the ball at the 36 yard line. Are you talking about the some predators? Of, are you talking about some of those things that the Cougars would need to have go right for them here? And so that might be one of those plays where Waterloo. I mean, that's one of the things that can really frustrate you if you don't didn't see anything on that play where you thought there might be a penalty. As we can hear some of the fans in front of us really didn't think there was anything wrong with that tackle. But we'll just see how that goes. That's a costly penalty against them. Well, it's hard to, I mean, for uh, I'll be honest with you, for me anyway, it's hard to tell when it's that far across the field. Torres going to give the hand off. Oh, nice. Oh, that ball is loose on the big hit. Oh, just as the Cougars just get something going on offense, Garrett Stonefish takes a big hit from a defender, and that ball pops out. And Waterloo recovers. Hudson Billing, number 44 there with the grab as he fell on that ball on the field and that'll turn things around. And yeah, just as the Cougars are starting to look like they were rolling a little bit on offense, all of a sudden big play like that and that just takes the wind right out of your sails. Yeah, it certainly does. Stonefish took a pretty good hit there. Looked like somebody got their helmet on the football and it just popped out and rolled away from him and the Predator is able to jump on it. Get the football at their 37 yard line. Maybe call it their 38. First and 10. Gonna hand it off, keep it on the ground here on first down, looking to get the edge. And with the tackle there. Connor Wright, number 11. Defense for the Cougars trying to swing the ball back there, other way now and just get some momentum going after that. You can't do anything about the, the fumble there and uh, just answer back and try to pin them in deep here and maybe try to force a turnover just like Waterloo just did. Second and two here. And they're gonna put it on the ground. Good penetration there from the Cougars defense. Nicely done. And that's going to be little to no gain, I believe, on that run. That's going to bring up a third and two. Another good stop there for the defense. Anyways, answering back after a tough play for the offense. And that's exactly what the Cougars need right now. And as they're talking it over for Waterloo, it looks like they have gone for it a number of times so far in this game. You're going to see the defense is going to have to make another hard stop here. Oh. No substitutions here for Waterloo. So you got to figure they're going for it. Third and two on their own 46 yard line. Obviously have a lot of confidence in their offense. Up 22 to three. And they're gonna put it on the ground and they're gonna get it easily. Carry there by Kyle Poshner. Making a nice gain run right up the center of the field too. He didn't have to move either side and they only needed two yards. And I think that's why he just ran straight up the gut and was able to find that extra room though that I don't think he anticipated. <laughs> and it was some good job from his offensive line opening up the hole there for him. That fresh set of downs now. At about the 53 yard line, Brush is going to fake the handoff and he's going to go deep down that left side. He has a receiver out there, but overthrown. That is good coverage out there by the Cougars there. And slightly overthrown, but it was man to man coverage. And just uh, out of the reach of the receiver, but again. Good job by the Cougars defense. Yeah, one of the first times I think we've seen number 11 go out that far wide along the sidelines. Usually he's a guy that sort of cuts across the middle and you go for that top uh, shelf throw to him up high that he can grab and bring down. So just a little bit overthrown and uh, Waterloo will get a ball on second down here. Oh, wide open out there is the receiver, 84. And then able to make a couple of moves and pick up some extra yardage as well. 
before finally being tackled by uh, Connor Wright. Yeah, he caught the ball pretty much right in front of the sticks there. Looks like he was going to have a close to, anyways, a first down right off the catch, and then that little extra shake and bake at the end there <laughs> just to psych out the defender, break his ankles a little, and then run right past him before he's tackled to get a couple extra yards. And Lozon, Corey Lozon in on that tackle as well, number 31, the corner over on this side of the field. Brush going to put it in the air again. Oh, beautiful throw and catch. Just pinpoint precision right there, hitting the receiver right on target. He's just making it look easy out there now. In the right in stride, the receiver didn't even have to move, didn't have to stop rather. He just kept moving his feet and he ran right to where the ball was going to be. So good anticipation there by the quarterback about where he needed to throw the ball to, not at the receiver, but just into that open space. Well, Andrew Brush appears to be just too good to be able to sit in the pocket and pick you apart. You've got to get him off of that spot. You've got to get some pressure in his face or else uh, it looks like he's just going to pick you apart. I'm going to put the ball on the ground this time, mix it up a little bit, and good job on the backside defense that time is Brendan Bondi with the tackle. Yeah, good speed by him. One of the first times we've seen him run through the backfield like that and was just able to really make some room back there. Big line, ch big uh, personnel change here up front for the Cougars now as they're replacing that defensive line. Yeah, I think they just subbed out the whole defensive line there for the Cougars. Seven fifteen to go in this football game and counting. Waterloo leading. Fake the handoff, then swing it outside. Uh, looks like uh, it's going to be close to a first down there again. I think just shy. I mean, the person who was holding the sticks there, no, no fault to, to her. She had to get out of the way before that ball and all those players came crashing down around her. But, uh, yeah, they were able to push him out just shy. So I'll have a little bit of work to do here still. That's going to bring up a third down and short. Looks like it's about a uh, foot and a half. And they'll hand it off. Try the middle of that defense. Oh, good bit of a push there. Looks like look like they got a little bit of a surge. Just when it looked like they were stopped. Uh, and it is a first down. Looks like uh, the ball's oh, going to no, go. Oh no, they're going to say it was short. Way. Yeah, first down yeah, for the Cougars. First down here. for the Cougars. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. No, it's just a, just a little short there, and you have to wonder about that decision. Wow. Sort of, I would think, just for the Predators. I mean, what do you really have to gain by another? Uh, score there. I mean, if you want to run down the clock, maybe. But if you kick a field goal there, I mean, you're already at a 19-point game. I think that's three scores right there. And then, so if you kick that field goal and make it four, all of a sudden, so or at least a little bit more difficult for the Cougars. They take an easy three, but uh, they thought they had it, and they almost did, and uh, just couldn't quite punch it far enough. Cougars now deep in their own territory. They're 15. Yard line approximately and trailing 22 to 3 with under seven minutes to play in this football game. And they're going to fake the handoff, go to the air, the middle of the field, oh, wide open and overthrown. Pass intended for Ethan Joseph, but Evan Torres. Just a little bit long with that one, unfortunately, because uh, there was nobody in front of Ethan Joseph if he, had he made that catch. Yeah, if he just had an extra step on him or the ball was just a little bit lower, he would have had plenty of room down the center of the field there. They're going to hand the ball off this time. And some room there. Good run. Well designed play there for Cartier. Picked up about 12 yards there in a first down. Yeah, a little misdirection in the backfield. A couple of guys running in and uh, finally the quarterback handed it off as he was able to find some room out here. It looked like there was a little bit of room along the sidelines, but and that uh, split, split uh, second decision you got to make. Was able to look upfield and uh, still able to get a first down though, so nice run there. 
First down out there, the own 30 yard line. Torres is gonna draw back and he's got pressure. Oh, he's got some blockers out front, completes the pass. Good tackle there from Waterloo, but that's enough for a first down. Stonefish with the reception. Pick up about uh, 13 yards there. Oh no, they're gonna spot it back a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's about 13 yard gain. Torres dropping back, looking to his right and going deep. And that's a nice an adjustment there and a catch. I believe that was Ethan Jordan with the snag on that far side. And that's why you go to Ethan Jordan. He can go up and make a catch like that for you. A couple times already you've seen him in a position to make a catch like that, but there was a couple pass interference calls going against the Predators, and he's the kind of guy who uh, you look to, and then threw that ball up down the sidelines, had to figure number 10 was gonna be the intended target. So major substitutions there for Waterloo, bring off about five or six players. Torres looking to his right, got a receiver there, catch is made. Pass complete on the far side. And then a quick move and able to pick up an extra yard or two. Are they going to say that that ball was loose? Okay, it was Jordan with the catch there. Pick up of six yards, second and four. Again, that clock still ticking. Now under four minutes to play. The Cougars trailing 22-3. Yeah, swing it out wide. Oh, and that's a backward pass. Oh, still on his feet, but Stonefish nowhere to go with that. And a uh, loss of a few yards on that one. That's not the direction you want to be going. And now it's going to bring up a third and looks to be about 15. Yeah, he kind of looked like he was caught a little bit off guard by that and uh, he just didn't, he bobbled it and then was looking around at what he was going to be able to do and the last thing you want to do is turn backwards and he lost a couple yards on that play. So the Cougars forced to go for it on third down here. They air it out and that is caught. Wow. Nice catch there. Ben Bernard with the grab. Three minute warning. So Bernard, after that grab, gets the Cougars down to the 12 yard line. Torres drops back, scanning the left side of the field, throws it out there, and good coverage from Waterloo's defense. Nowhere for Cartier to go after making that grab, and that's something that we've seen this whole game. Anytime the Cougars complete a pass, it just seems like the defender is right there. They are not getting any yards after the catch at all. Uh, it's almost uh, some of those looks down the field when they catch the ball, too. I mean, they are getting tackled right away, but it's the way they've been able to find the most success is when they do toss it up down the field there, even though there's a defender right on him. If the wide receiver can make that catch and get it down, that's the best way for them to find some yards. And Cougars offense, so maybe a little too, uh, too little too late here, but they are starting to really heat up as they move down the field. Second down here, Torres looking out to the right side, looking for a big play, oh, and it's picked off. Intercepted and returned outside of the end zone. And Waterloo will take over. I believe it was Ethan Jordan that was targeted over on that far side. Probably one of the last things you want to see as a quarterback when you're tossing a ball like that to your wide receiver is their back. And that's what happened there. <laughs> Jordan, as he just turned his back, the ball was coming right to him, just left the quarterback's hands, and he turned his back and was turning to the outside. Looked like he was going to cut to the outside. And at that point, it was already too late. The defender was looking at the ball the whole way and was just there to make the catch and turn it around. And tough, tough turnover there for the Cougars as they finally starting to find some room down there on offense. 
Well, it's just 214 to play now in this football game. Waterloo up 22 to 3. I'm sure just going to be looking to assault this one away now. And they're going to fake the handoff and then toss it outside. We got a flag on the play. I've got to think this has got to be uh, probably a, a hold or an illegal block against Waterloo. Seems like it's been that kind of a night for the Cougars, though. Every time they find something that's going their way, just a bad turnover and something else happens. And, you know, a couple lost fumbles, a couple lost opportunities early in this game. And now this time, too, you get all the way down the field after a couple of nice passes, a couple of nice catches, athletic catches, too. And you go back to your playmaker, Ethan Jordan, down there, and the ball just goes away from him. And the other team catches it and turns it around. To their credit, though, the Predators looking strong the whole way. The penalty flag going against Waterloo. The Preds flagged for a hold there, so it's half the distance to the goal. That's going to make it about first and 13 now. And Brush is going to put this one in the air again, over to the outside. Oh, the ball came out there at the end, but they're going to say that was whistled dead beforehand. And that's going to make it a second, and it looks to be about seven yards now. Under two minutes to play here. And Brush is going to put this one in the air. He's looking deep over the middle. Oh, and it's overthrown. It's like that was intended for Devontae Russell. But uh, overthrown by Andrew Brush. Yeah, overthrown. That ball traveled about 45 yards. <laughs> he was throwing it pretty much from on the goal line there all the way down the field. So good 40 yards at least for him on that toss. So uh, overthrown, he's got quite an arm on him. We've seen that earlier in this game too, a couple of those passes, and you got to give him credit for that. Uh, if you're defending as well, you got to watch out for those long passes and they <laughs> give them credit too. They're up 22 to three and they're still going for a deep ball like that. So they line up to punt this one away and they will indeed punt it. Short kick, oh my, and that's that hit the return man, Wilcox. Wow, but they're able to pick it up. Boy. The, uh, I think Waterloo, for a second, that way that bounce, if they had been able to pick it up, they would have run it back to the house. But uh, the Cougars able to jump on it. Number 92 for the Cougars, I believe that was. However, with the changes in the jerseys oh and we have found it darwin mitchell able to jump on that football uh, heads up play by him there are a couple of people in that area a couple of people in that area who were uh, looking to jump on that but he was the first guy who was able to get his hands on it and grab it so that was a nice play by him to salvage that oh some mix up in the backfield there as torres was handing off that football cartier finds a lane though Nice run there. Picks up about uh, 14 yards. At this point, it's all about what you can take away from this game now, too. You know, you're in tough down 22 to 3. You got everything going against you. If the Cougars can come back here, and it seemed like it was a bit of a um, brag almost for Waterloo to decide to kick that ball away, too, just to say that you can't score on us. Yeah. But for the for the Cougars here to come back and make that statement and just to put at least one on the board would be big for them. Uh, we've got a flag. Torres rolling to his right and throws it away. Oh, no flag. They're waving it off. Second and ten now for the Cougars. One eleven to play in this one. 
second down and 10 at the Waterloo 26. Torres going to go left side, going deep. Oh! oh. Nearly pulled in by Ben Bernard. Ball was a little bit underthrown, which actually worked in Bernard's favor as the defender was up ahead, but just couldn't pull it in. Yeah, it looked like he just heaved it into that area. Gave his uh, teammate a chance to make a nice play there. And Barnard, as you mentioned, a little bit underthrown, so he got caught stumbling a little bit there as he reached out for it, but just couldn't get enough on it to haul that one in. It would have been really close, if not in the end zone there. Third and 10 now. Chatham Kent at the Waterloo 27 yard line. Torres gonna look back, go deep again down the left side and that's overthrown. Was targeting, looked like he was targeting Bernard again, but it falls incomplete and they're gonna turn the ball over on downs. Yeah, they were going for the score the whole way on those last two plays. Uh, not even just trying to get to 10 yards to try to get that first down. They were just trying to go for the score with time winding down, only a minute left now. You gotta think that the Predators will just run the clock here and run the rest of this game out. Waterloo has been a tough customer today. The Preds very efficient on offense, especially through the air. Very, very efficient, led by their quarterback, Andrew Brush, and uh, a wealth of receiving talent to spread the ball around to. As he looks deep down this right side. Oh, and a great catch. Phenomenal grab from number 84, Aiden Carter. What a great grab. And these guys, one, <laughs> one minute left in the Boy, game. Boy, for a moment it didn't look like he had a chance to make that grab. It looked like that ball was maybe thrown just a little too far. But uh, Aiden Carter made up some ground right at the end and able to make that snag. One minute left in the game. These guys just chuck it down the field like that too. They were really um, putting the exclamation point on this one here. And that, that was a highly real catch for him too. Nice, no nice grab. That'll... Uh, That'll look good in the, uh, as you mentioned, the high re highlight reel when that goes out to uh, to any schools if he's looking to move on. Good defense there from the Cougars on that incomplete pass. Going to force a second and ten. Beautiful night for football. Certainly uh, great weather. The uh, wind certainly helped bring down the temperature a little bit, make it a, a more comfortable event here in Chatham-Kent. Been sweltering the last few days. They're gonna look deep and pressure up the pocket. Now Brush eludes it and airs it out. And oh, and it is caught. Oh, wow. Wow, looks like that was misjudged just a little bit by Connor Wright. And the receiver just made a tremendous grab before Wright made the tackle. And he just, again, chucking it up, but his, <laughs> as much as the quarterback has an arm on him, his wide receivers are doing a great job making him look good too because they're making some nice catches like they did there, a contested catch, and able to haul that one in and bring it down. And uh, there's just no uh, drop in the compete level for these Predators. They just keep pushing it to them. Fresh set of downs here and... Rush is going to fake the pass and then hand it off and nothing doing there. That was good defense. Evan Clark makes the stop there. Good tackle in the backfield. The Cougars looking a little winded out there too. This defense, they've been spending a lot of time on the field today. Well, the way the offense has been playing out there for the Predators and just the, uh, the Cougars offense being a little bit stalled too. This, this defensive line we are selling was swapped out once earlier in this game too. So a lot of those guys getting a lot of work. Brush is 
faking the handoff. He's going to keep it, and he's going to retreat. He's going to look down the field. He's got pressure in his face, and no. Nope. Throws it away and falls incomplete. But the footwork by him to still elude those two tacklers who are coming down on him, bearing down on him. And uh, the arm on him too, just when he's running backwards like that, they're able to turn the ball up the field that far that it was almost in reach of uh, one of his wide receivers out there. Well, I'd say that, that was one of the things that the Cougars could have used this game was more pressure like that in the face of Andrew Brush. That brings up a third and very long, and with 1.9 seconds to go in this football game, the Waterloo Predators are going to go for it. And he's just going to run out the clock and then take a knee. Well, that's good to see. Well, the uh, Waterloo Region Predators certainly came in and uh, put on a pretty impressive performance as the road team to come away with this victory tonight. Yeah, they made the trip worth it, that's for sure. You have to wonder sometimes these ro long road trips all the way out there. Are you going to come away with a win or a loss? And uh, the performance they put on here, I mean, they're going to have some solid stuff to look, solid tape to look back at as well about how to win a football game. Just dominate right from the beginning, that opening drive that was just textbook, and then uh, from then on in, they just did a great job of limiting them, uh, the Cougars on defense and uh, just putting up some more scores for them as well, padding that lead. Well, certainly uh, Andrew Brush flashed his talents here tonight. I mean, there's no doubt he's got weapons to you know, pass the ball around too, but uh, number 10 slinging it back there in the pocket. Also had a couple of nice runs too when he had some pressure and had to tuck and run. Uh, very, very impressive in leading this Predators offense. And then defensively, they did a good job of not allowing the, the Cougars to get too much momentum and uh, pretty much shut down their offense as well. Well, even late in that game when the Cougars looked like they had a chance and they were throwing the ball down the field and getting really close to putting up a score or at least getting in that scoring territory. And there was that interception, that big interception right in the end zone area where the Predators were able to flip the switch and turn things around the other way and from then on in just closed it out. Well, there you have it. Uh, the Chatham King Cougars fall to the visiting Waterloo Region Predators 22-3 in varsity football action. Thank you for taking in this football action here at the Chatham King Community Athletic Complex. On behalf of Jeff Brooks on the camera, Matt Weaverink, my partner, and Mike James, myself, thank you for joining us watching Varsity Football here on your TV.